Does it make any sense to spend a lot of money on a premium large RTX 5080 model or is this smaller more affordable 5080 good enough? Is there any tangible difference between the two in terms of performance, noise and thermals? Let's find out. In this instance we are comparing the MSI Supreme SoC RTX 5080, which is like the most premium model that MSI makes, with the MSI Inspire 3 XOC RTX 5080. In terms of pricing this model occupies a spot just above MSRP, so this is not the cheapest model, this is still a pretty nice cooler, high quality with lots of heat pipes. The price difference between these two models can be very big. Over time I've seen a difference between three to five hundred dollars between these two graphics cards. For example, in the United Kingdom right now, this one costs 1000 British pounds and this one costs 1380 pounds. So that's a 380 pounds difference. That is a lot of money. The biggest problem that I have with these large 5080s is that sometimes they just don't fit into normal size ATX cases that we're used to and you have to get a very long and wide case for it specifically. So yeah, while the other one, the Inspire 3X is quite compact and it can fit into most ATX cases and even into some ITX builds. The Supreme SoC 5080 is 71 millimeters longer, it is much taller and it weighs two and a half times more than the Inspire 3X. Not to mention that it is much thicker. This one is about two and a half slots, so basically you need three slots for this one but for this one you need four slots. It is much, much thicker. Take a look at this. Huge difference. Of course, with a larger size come quite a few advantages, such as larger fans, a bigger heatsink and more heat pipes that help dissipate heat more effectively. But does that make any meaningful difference in real world usage scenarios or is this guy good enough? Let's put these graphics cards to the test using my Ryzen 7 9800X 3D PC build. Let's start with the underdog smaller Inspire 3X model. Look at that. It looks normal inside of this PC case. Actually no, it looks tiny in this huge PC case. And it doesn't need any GPU support whatsoever, so uh, the Support bracket is just not needed for this graphics card. It is light enough to just, you know, sit there on its own without any support and no flex is happening. Even over time, there is nothing to worry about. It is worth noting that I don't have any climate control equipment in my room where I'm testing this. So no air conditioning no other forms of cooling. So it's not going to be completely apples to apples comparison, but I'll try to keep the room temperature between 25 and 26 degrees Celsius. At the moment it's slightly higher than 25 degrees Celsius, that is almost 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Both graphics cards are rated for 360 watts and indeed this one consumes around 360 on average. It's just jumping between 350 and 370 even sometimes. So yeah, you've seen just then 366, 367. In terms of thermals, the Inspire 3X is currently sitting at 72 to 73 degrees Celsius on the GPU core and the fans are spinning at 65%, that's 2500 RPM. That said, yesterday when I actually was filming a review of this graphics card, in my room it was something like 27 plus uh, degrees, so it was hotter, 
and the fans were spinning at 2700 RPM and the temperature was closer to 74 to 75 degrees Celsius on the GPU core. So just keep that in mind that uh, with smaller coolers, if your room temperature is getting higher and higher, that's when these smaller cars struggle to dissipate heat. But we'll see if this is good enough compared to this huge card, okay? In terms of testing methodology, I'm using Cyberpunk at native 4K resolution. This is quite a realistic scenario. We're targeting 60 plus FPS at 4K. Let's use this wireless microphone to take a listen to the noise this graphics card is making. It is only slightly louder than other fans in this premium Be Quiet system. So, not a huge deal actually, yeah. This is not a noisy graphics card by any means and uh, I was actually very impressed with it when I was testing it for a review yesterday in a hotter conditions room. It was 27 degrees, so a little bit cooler than we have right here right now. But yeah, even then this graphics card was quite enough for me just to enjoy my games using speakers with the PC sitting right next to me, right there, okay? I would say that the Inspire 3X with its smaller cooler is definitely good enough for Northern European conditions. If you are not living in a particularly hot climate, then it works perfectly fine, even if you like quiet PCs. However, if you're living in a much hotter climate, if it's something like 30 plus or even higher in your country, then I don't know, maybe this isn't uh, a good solution for you if you want a quiet GPU. Unfortunately, I can't test that because, yeah, there is uh, no way I can uh, get my room to like 30 plus degrees. That is just unreasonable, unfortunately. In terms of performance, we are getting 73 FPS quite consistently with the GPU fully loaded. The GPU core is boosting to 2775 MHz, sometimes jumping to 2782, sometimes it drops to lower positions. I think I've seen something like 2740 MHz, so it's up and down, up and down depending on the thermal situation and the room temperature. If it gets hotter and the fans get louder, then uh, the GPU core clock will actually drop. I'll take a look at that, 72 FPS right now. So the performance actually fluctuates a little bit. Let's say that it's 72 to 73 FPS, all right? The Supreme SoC model definitely has more Let's call it presence in this PC case. Take a look at this. A massive difference in size compared to the Inspire 3X. But I guess it looks better in this particular case because it just fills up more space in this massive case. I guess that's a plus. Furthermore, this graphics card comes with two operating modes gaming for the best performance at the cost of uh, noise and fan speed although <laughs> this card doesn't get noisy i'll tell you that right away and silent which in theory is supposed to lower the fan speed and uh, we'll test both starting with the performance gaming mode and see what happens Oh, and I definitely don't want to use this graphics card long term without any support. So I'm actually using the GPU support included with my PC case. It is okay for short term because the rigidity is quite good due to the fact that it has uh, like a very nice frame over here, solid metal frame. So it's rigid enough. But long term, 
I wouldn't trust it. I would still use the GPU support just in case because it's an expensive GPU and an expensive motherboard. I don't want anything to happen to any of my components. That said, if you don't have any GPU support included with your PC case, this graphics card comes with this GPU support stand in the box. So you don't have to worry about that. The room temperature is just below 79 degrees Fahrenheit. That is uh, almost 26 degrees Celsius. Now let's take a look at the performance. That is the most important part, right? We are getting 75 to 76 FPS. That is around 4 to 5% higher performance compared to what we were getting on the Inspire 3X RTX 5080. Is that a huge performance leap? No, it's not a huge one, but quite a significant one nonetheless. However, the performance difference alone does not justify such a high price premium on the Supreme version, all right? Let's see what else uh, the Supreme has over the Inspire 3X. The most interesting fact is that the Supreme consumes 10 watts less power. That tells me that uh, these GPUs are actually binned. That's the only explanation I can think of because uh, the performance is higher and the power consumption is lower. So they must be binned, right? The GPU temperature is much lower. It's at 62 to 63 degrees Celsius, all right? That's uh, about 10 degrees uh, lower compared to the Inspire model. And uh, the GPU core clock is boosting roughly 100 megahertz higher. You see, that's 2865 megahertz right now. And the GPU fan speed is lower too, 55%, just above 1700 RPM. That is a lot lower than 2500 RPM we've seen out of the Inspire 3X. Now let's listen to the noise using this microphone. The Supreme SoC is very quiet even in the gaming mode and it will be even quieter in the silent mode. Yeah, there is no noise to report. It's just normal operation. Mostly we are hearing the same kind of noise from all the fans in this system. Because the fan speed is so low, we have a lot of headroom left for quiet operations even in hotter environments. Now let's switch to the silent mode. There we go. The silent mode on this graphics card is quite interesting because look at this. In terms of FPS we lost about 1 FPS. That is roughly 1% difference in terms of performance between the silent and gaming modes on the Supreme SoC graphics card, all right? That is not a lot. And what else did we gain from switching to the silent mode? Well, the GPU power is slightly lower now, about 5 to 7 watts less. That's 342 to 345 watts power draw. The GPU temperature is slightly higher, but nothing alarming. This is still a very low GPU temperature. The core clock boost is about the same. And the fan speed is lower, below 1400 RPM. But it will get there, it will get there as the room temperature keeps climbing. Yeah, that's 26 degrees Celsius right now, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Comparable room temperature to what we had previously during our previous tests. The noise levels didn't change much because uh, this graphics card was very quiet to begin with. But if I absolutely had to make a comment on that, then I would say that it is slightly quieter, but nothing significant, nothing tangible.
The experience in the gaming mode was good enough, in my opinion. Actually, it was brilliant because it offered a lot of room for even overclocking, if you're into that. For fairness sake, let's listen to the noise in the silent mode. Yeah, the noise is very similar to the gaming mode, just a little bit lower. But because there are other fans still making noise in this system, you can't really tell the difference between the two modes. In conclusion, the answer is less straightforward than I expected initially going into this experiment, because it turns out that both graphics cards, both models, are serving their purposes. There are different purposes, okay? What I'm happy to report is that the smaller, cheaper Inspire 3X version is good enough. If you're looking to buy an RTX 5080, then you don't have to spend top dollar to get a premium version with a large cooler. That's not necessary. You can just get the cheaper one with a smaller cooler that fits into most cases. And it will deliver good performance good noise levels, good thermals. However, if you want better cooling for whatever reason, it could be for overclocking headroom or for just running this graphics card in hotter environments, then a larger, more expensive graphics card can be justified because it offers better cooling. And let's not forget about aesthetics. As I mentioned, the Supreme SoC fills in this PC case nicer than the Inspire 3X because it is much larger. And it just feels more at home in larger PC cases, such as this Be Quiet Light Base 900. Ultimately, it is still up to you to decide which model is uh, the right one for you. But at least now we know that even the cheaper, smaller models are good enough. Yeah, let me know in the comments. What do you think about this? And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, don't forget to reward my work with a like. It helps out a lot and I really appreciate it. If you are interested in any of the graphics cards or any other products featured in this video, you can find them on Amazon at the links in the description below. It was I, Vadim, until next time.